So one of the things that I suggested on the uh, Canvas website was that in addition to downloading the Spitfire audio video, that you also take a bit of a trip to the Spitfire audio uh, website and have a look for their labs, which is a bunch of really funky, cool, free sounds that they've got available there. Let me just flick my browser over into this screen here we go so the labs are a series of free software instruments um, and they say in the competition you don't have to use um, their instruments but they do give these ones away for free and you know hey you are music educators so why not download free stuff especially when it's high quality free stuff so there's a bunch of these. They've been adding these um, regularly now for some time. Uh, so you need to download the um, Spitfire Audio downloading engine and sign up for an account. And then you can simply go and add the ones that you like. So if you're going for some orchestral scoring, then download their pianos and their strings and things that sound like instruments that you would find in an orchestra, trumpet fields. And if you're going for something more kind of electronic and funky, then download more stuff like the Atmos. Of course, you can download both. If you've got plenty of space on your hard drive, these will fill lots of space up on your hard drive. All right, so let's just pop back into Reaper and just show you how to add one of those instruments into Reaper after you've downloaded it and installed it. Uh, also, I would just suggest that if you're downloading while you're playing with Reaper for the first time and you think you've got one ready, probably save your file in Reaper, close it and open it again just to give it a chance to see those new sounds that you've just added. And then you go to track and what we want to add is a virtual instrument on one track. Okay, so it's going to create um, a MIDI track for us and we're going to add a virtual instrument which in this case is the Spitfire audio instrument. But when you first come into this, now I've probably got a ridiculous number of plugins compared to you guys because, you know, I've been playing around with this stuff for a while. So when you first come into this, there are a bunch of ways, different ways that you can get to those instruments. But my advice just for while you're working on loading up lots of MIDI instruments is to um, just close the all plugins and the categories ones because... Basically, if you're, you're probably going to be working from the Spitfire audio, again, I'll have more things here than you've got, most likely, unless you're really into the, the, the techie stuff yourself. So you're probably just going to be going again and again to this Spitfire audio. Each time you want to add another one of their instruments, you're going to make another track. But in addition to that, uh, I think I also mentioned the Matt Tetel um, one and the Yuhi uh, synth that I might use later as well. So you're going to go to the same place each time. And if you just go to developers, it's probably easier to find. Now, if you're on a Windows computer, you're going to be choosing uh, one of the VST types. To be quite honest, it's not going to make a lot of difference right now uh, which one of those you choose. Uh, on a Mac computer, I tend to go with AU just because it's Apple's audio unit. Um, and I feel like I'm going to have fewer problems with my mac wigging out if i um if i pick that format but i don't know whether that is true no empirical testing has been done so VA vsts might be just as reliable on a mac you will find though when you're doing a video scoring project you you know you can get the old fan of your laptop going fairly hard because you can be running the processing quite high so anyway once i've done that click ok it's going to add in that plugin i know you can see it's come up here with soft piano I'm just i've got a midi keyboard next to me here and i'm getting absolutely nothing out of that which is fantastic but you can probably hear it um that's just because i'm set up capturing the the audio um and well you might say well why is it loaded the soft piano what if i wanted to load one of the other ones well that's that's easy enough because you actually can do it all within the browser here so one player for all the different instruments you can very quickly get around the different kinds of instruments so again thinking about the different kinds of composing you might want to be doing for those of you who might want to be doing orchestrally stuff we can go and say find me some strings i can say oh yeah i want a super soltasto cello double click on that or press the load button and then go and find. 
that's working for me now as well. That is nicely spooky, isn't it? Um, and uh, or you might be doing something which is a little bit more. Let's just clear that. You might be doing something which is a, you might be going for the kind of the experimental. Um, a lot of these are very very fun. I'm, naturally, I'm looking for one that I've used before that it's going to be, but I can't think so. I'll just go for Locust just because it's got a cool name. Ooh, check that out. I can't imagine using that, but but I probably, you know, if I worked hard enough, I probably could find somewhere to use that. Let's just find one more, which is a bit more pitched from here. I totally failing digital drizzle sounds fun doesn't it okay i'm going to go for glacial pad just because i want to show you what those big knobs are for well i've ended up with quite a stringy sound anyway all right so these knobs will mean different things depending on um uh, what you're loading uh, this one i think is to do with where the microphones are well, just Simply volume. Okay, so as we can hear, that one is a, a kind of modulation. And then this one is currently, if you click in the middle of this one, you can find out what it's set to. So it's currently set to reverb, but you've got a bunch of other things here. I'm kind of interested in tightness, but let's play around with reverb. So that is one of the things I've noticed about Spitfire Audio's plugins. Um, their reverbs are really beautiful. Well, I don't know whether it's just the fact that the reverb is beautiful, but um, maybe they, it's a, a combination of the fact that the reverbs are beautiful, but they also really fit with the samples that they give you. I always feel whenever I listen to their reverb, just by turning it up and down while I'm playing, that I probably want to have it at 100%, just because it's such a nice effect. Let's see what tightness... Oh, it's not allowing me to change to tightness. Oh, that's a shame. There you go. That's probably user error. There's probably a good reason why I can't change the tightness right now. But anyway. Let's turn that all the way up. Oh, yeah. All right. Now that's all good and well to see what we can load and how we can load things in there. But of course, what we actually want to do is be scoring our soundtrack. So my first thing in here was gunfire, right? So I was going to score two gunfire. But actually, that's not the first thing that happens, is it? What, 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 what is the mood of this first scene? Let's just watch this first scene. By the way, once, once you've finished using that, you can just close it. Um, you don't have to keep it floating around on the screen there. Uh, and this FX button here... We'll bring it back up for you at any time. The other thing that I should say is uh, when you load those sounds, quite often you'll just want to play around with them. I've got a MIDI keyboard here, but I did also bring the virtual MIDI keyboard up on my screen. And you can get to that by going to view and then down to virtual MIDI keyboard. You can see here it's telling me the option on my Mac is option B. Uh, or So that might be alt B on a Windows computer, but have a look. Um, and then that will allow me to play it just with the computer keyboard. So if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can still do lots of composing with your MIDI keyboard. And you don't have to have that window open while you're doing it. Oh yeah, that reverb's really long as well as spacious and big now, isn't it? All right, so uh, I'll just leave that open so that I can use that if I want to. Let's just, yeah, let's just have a think about what is the mood at the start of this? All right, so it's just, it's actually just, well, what is it? Like he jumps, doesn't he? So it's quite settled, but there's a bit of tension. Obviously something bad might happen. Yeah, so what I might go for there is a kind of, I might just put a drone in here with some kind of interval that makes me feel a little bit, apprehensive but not not like a nasty sound so that see at that point 
that's nice because that makes the connection again between playing around with ideas of timbre and ideas of mood. So let's. I'm just going to go back into here, and actually, I think I will go just go to strings and see if I can find any um, you know extended string techniques that we kind of know. Well, the soltasto was a good one earlier. That soltasto um, is quite a good sound for making us feel a little bit awkward. Harmonics are good as well. Let's see what else we've got here. Bartok Pitts Ensemble. That's that's the pizzicato on a string instrument where you snap the string against the fingerboard so that could be good for the gun show actually uh and then what have we got amplified cello quartet that sounds wild doesn't it and then we're into dulcimer all right well uh i wonder what eve oh no tension i'm gonna go for tension yeah let's have a look should have really prepared this better shouldn't i here we go perfect brilliant okay so you know it's just a it's just a, um, a timbre isn't it and and an interval but that that can be so effective so what i'm going to do now is i've got my mouse pointer at the start here i'm just going to hit record by the way at the moment this is set to the standard um tempo that's down here in um in reaper 120 that's a totally useless temp never record music this is something Anne boyd taught me when i was doing my masters with her some decades ago Never record music at 60 or 120. Um, she had lots of good reasons for it, but, you know, one of them being seconds and clocks and stuff like that. Anyway, I'm going to record from the start, and I'm not going to worry about that. I'll change that tempo later on if I need to. So just find myself... Yeah, there you go. That's, that's a little bit of tension. So I'm just going to hit record... Um, by the way, this is the last track I added, and I already showed you that you could open FX to get back into here, but this little red button here, record armed, also that's important because it means I'm going to record into this track. So you recognize that from Soundtrap, those of you who've used Soundtrap. Okay. Now, I... Uh, didn't organize myself to have a... Um, oops, why are you bleeping at me? Damn you. Done something wrong, obviously. Haven't stopped it. Oh, sorry. That was that was because I'm recording a screen on my other monitor. It was asking me a question. Um, okay, so... <laughs> dear me. Um, so what I want to do is... I actually meant that you know, I meant to give myself a count in. I forgot to turn the count in on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on this and I am going to, well, I can do this a couple of different ways, but I want to, I think I want to split, split items at Kersing. Again, learn the shortcut S. You remember that we did a lot of that stuff in Premiere the week that we learned that. And then I'm going to just click on the bit that I want to get rid of. And come on, let's just move this guy back to the start so that music starts a little bit closer to when the film starts all right and and i might already have a mood change at that point so let's just to finish with i'm not going to take you through a whole composition process but let's just add another one another track another instance of the labs from Spitfire again. So I'm going to go track, insert virtual track, and again, you know, choose whichever type you like. See, it's remembered where I was at, so I didn't have to go scrolling through those options again, which is great. That's given me another instance of this. So now I can go in here. Well, I had some those Bartok pitches, didn't I? I'm not actually convinced that that's going to work at the moment. Let's just go and find the strings. Narrow it down to strings and choose the Bartok pits. Let's have a listen to this. Now you can actually still hear the other one playing there. That's because I've still got the record arm turned on. So I'll turn that off. Now we'll just hear the Bartok pits. I probably want, <laughs> as usual, to turn the reverb all the way up. Maybe not the whole way up, but a long way up. 
That's pretty wild, isn't it? What else is it offering me? Tightness. Huh. Yeah, play around with that for an hour, an hour or two. So that's just a little bit of a filter on that particular knob there. Um, all right, cool. I'm pretty excited about, about putting this in. So, and now I can just go and record uh, something, you know, approximately at the same time that the gunshot happens. Remember, as you saw before, if I don't get the timing of the music when I'm recording it to the... Um, to the action exactly right it's fine because i can just move the midi around later so let's just let's just try that verified enable semi-automatic control disable safety features maximum speed go yeah there we go i'm not sure that that really works with this that that particular soundtrack really works with this kind of action film but you know hey i'm not going to worry about it overly because it's just an example i can delete it and try again you can see that that lined up quite nicely if i want to just if i played those a little bit earlier i can move them until they're in exactly the right place but yep there we go so we now know how to import our video how to add markers to it and how to add different instrumental layers using the free labs instruments from spitfire audio we are flying <laughs>